Oh boy, a storybook of epic New Zealand men is a companion volume to the best-selling book Go Girl, which was released earlier this year. Now, it is full of stories about brilliant Kiwi men who followed their dreams and made the world a better place. Some of those featured are Billy T. James, Brett McKenzie, Sir Edmund Hillary, John Alomu, Kelly Tarleton, Peter Jackson, and there are so many more as well. And we welcome now long-time publisher, first-time author, Stuart <laughs> Lipshaw. Welcome, Stuart. Thank you. Speaking of men, of inspirational men who had a dream, you always had a dream to become an author. And now here's your, here's your book. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, how, yeah. How does it feel? It feels pretty amazing. I won't lie. It's, um, yeah, like this was something that has always been a dream of mine. It's why I got into publishing. Um, and yeah, to have it here now, it's, it's really cool. Like, you spend quite a long time writing the book. I started working on the book about a year ago. So to actually see it in the flesh is quite, yeah. It's, oh, no, and it's my sort of it. book too, you know. I'm a short form guy, so attention spans a bit short. So I like all the chapters, I like all the illustrations, and I like the subjects as well. But who did you write the book for? Um, it's So, yeah, I work at Penguin Random House, who's the book publisher, and it flows on from Go Girl, which Go Girl is about... Uh, inspiring young women to believe that they can do anything um, and this is sort of the same thing so it's yet written for young readers um, but I would hope that you know yourself anyone yeah. would take things from the book they're all I certainly took a lot from the book myself mm. it's all the stories in there are really inspirational and so how did you decide who to include <laughs> um, well so we made a really long list at the start just throwing it out ideas um, we had about 200 people down at the start and then it was just a matter of sitting down and Whittling them all down and trying to figure out... Not inspirational enough. You're gone. <laughs> well, I think the most important thing for us was really having a diverse range of people. True. Um, we wanted people to believe that... It was people to open the book and go, actually, like, I can relate to that person yeah. or I can relate not to that person. Not all sports people or not all yeah. actors or... Yeah. yeah, yeah. So do most of the people that you focus on have a story, which of course is aspirational, but did they have to overcome some obstacles? I think that's the one of the biggest takeaways for me. Right. And um, that, you know, all these people, like some of them, yeah, some of them have reached the pinnacle of, of their um, achievements, but they, they all had doubts. They all had obstacles to overcome. And I guess, yeah, we all, like everyone faces that in everyday life. And they were just strong enough to forge mm -hmm. on and believe that that's what they wanted to do with their life and keep going. Now, there's so many people in this book. We should have a look at yeah, some of the examples too because also 10 different illustrators have done the pictures for them as well. Yeah. So let's start with this one here, uh, Dr Lance O'Sullivan. Uh, so, yeah, I, the thing probably I found most interesting about Lance is that he really struggled early on in his life. Um, he was expelled from a couple of schools, I think by age 15. And then, you know, he's gone on to do such amazing things yeah, as a doctor. Yeah, become New Zealander of the Year and really helped the whole community. Didn't get into medical school when he first applied. Isn't yeah. that crazy? Yeah. Okay, cool. So we didn't know this. This is why it's good you've got the book. Uh, let's take a look now at Michael Jones. So he became an All Black. Um, what were some of the obstacles he had to overcome? Uh, so his father died when he was quite young. But I think the thing that I learned about him is that he sort of had that community. His mother really built a community around him um, from an early age and really just made sure... Mm those values were instilled in him and then he's gone on to have that community focus and, and the rest of his things. Wouldn't play rugby on a Sunday because of his beliefs, would he? Yeah. Um, Murray Halberg, pretty iconic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I'd always known about the Halberg Trust, um, but I didn't actually know how he won his gold medal. So with about three laps to go, he just took off. Wow. And it was a, you know, a really brave thing and he had to actually hold on right at the end. He was way out in front. I don't know if you've seen the race, but... No, yeah, well, after phenomenal. picking up the book, I might gonna have to go and have a look at that race. Okay, so Peter Jackson. So this is quite interesting. I didn't realise this about his Bad Taste movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he wanted to be, um, you know, a filmmaker right from, from where to go, it seems like. And um, he worked at the paper and just got his um, colleagues to come and help him out. And it's act a in Sunday his hobby. Make his movie yeah. on a Sunday. <laughs> yeah. crazy, if you haven't hey? seen Bad Taste, Bad Taste is a classic Kiwi movie. It yeah. really is. Uh, what about Richie McCaw? So um, probably the, the coolest thing I thought about Richie is that, you know, he was a seven-year-old boy lying on the floor watching the Rugby World Cup uh, when New Zealand won the first Rugby World Cup. And, you know, I've sort of had that feeling. I remember lying on, there, lying on the floor just waiting for something to happen and then getting really inspired and going, that's what I want to do. And, yeah, going, going ahead. And, and 24 years later, he's the one... On yeah, that field. What an incredible eh? Okay, tell me something that you learned about Billy T. James. Absolute legend, but what did you learn about him? Uh, that he was really shy. 
Oh, really? The sounds of things, yeah. Wow. Um, that so he probably used humour to overcome that. Yeah, yeah possibly. And they said um, he used to yeah, play his guitar in the, in the schoolyard and then people would come along and listen to him and he'd just stop playing. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Now, I know this is a really difficult question <laughs> with so many great <laughs> gonna ask. men in here, but who really stood out for you in this book? I think someone I would like, like there's really heaps of old, uh, older people that I didn't know anything about that were really interesting for me to learn about. But probably Edmund Hillary was mm -hmm. so Edmund Hillary was one of the most incredible ones for me because you think about him as someone who climbed Everest and that was such a key mm. moment and you'd think it was the key moment in his life, but he it sounded like he got his most joy from all the things he was able to do afterwards. Mm. Like wow. he was able to help all the people in Nepal and you know all the foundations and things that he ended up doing. Yeah. And Quite an incredible man. Good call. That's yeah. a good one. We'll yeah, take brilliant. that one. Okay. Oh boy, a storybook of epic New Zealand men is available now from all great bookshops or online bookstores too. Hey, thank you so much. No worries. Yeah, congratulations. Awesome illustrations as well.